Hi everyone, Frankie from EasyPowerWall.com. A new video this week about the Zkey E-Tech battery tester. In this video, we do a full inside out of this tester. We test the large LFP batteries, but also some smaller ones and even 18650s. How accurate is this device and how much noise does it produce? Let's dive into the video. I ordered the battery tester from AliExpress. As you can see, the item is very well packed, very good protection from uh, all sides. Included in the box, I have the power lead, the two test leads for the battery, and the serial USB connector that you can attach to the device. There's no manual included in the box, but of course you can download it from the website. It will also be available here in the link under the video. Let's have a proper view here on the test leads. These are the two four pin connectors we have to attach to the front of the tester. And the lead has two connectors to connect to the battery. Maybe you think that's for uh, smaller and larger batteries, but that's not correct. These are uh, high current connectors. This is for charging and discharging the battery. And the smaller ones are just sensing leads for the voltage. So you always have to use uh, both connectors if you test the capacity of a battery. Now let's pack everything together, connect it to a power supply and let's test a few batteries. I connected the USB cable to the USB interface of the tester but it's recommended not to plug it into the computer before you installed a small interface. So let's wait for that. Let's start connecting the testing leads. The left one is positive, is the red one. And at the right, the ground negative is the black cable. Leads are ready, now let's start installing the software and the driver. Let's start charging the first battery. Connect the charge and sensing leads to the battery. Make sure to verify the polarity of the battery. Now there are two ways to charge, discharge or test the capacity of the battery. You can do this by computer. It's not really needed. You can also use it as a standalone device. How does it work? You press uh, five seconds on the set button and you can choose if you charge or discharge. I have set the current 5 amps, it's a 25 amp per hour battery, so I will charge the battery uh, at 0.2C. I will charge the battery till it reaches 3.6 volts. It stops charging when the current is below 0.1 amp. If you want to change the value, I will set here to 5.5. like that, set, set, you go through the whole menu, I will increase this to 0 0.2, now it's set, you press again 5 seconds, now it shows again our current voltage, now if I press on, it will start charging, you will hear the noise.
and now the battery starts charging this is the standalone this is the standalone version where you can just easily start charging your battery especially if you have to do this in a separate room you can easily charge your batteries uh, without the hassle of the noisy charger of course it's always nice if you can uh, show or display the charge and discharge curve of your battery so in this case I will connect the uh, battery tester to the computer and open the software just put the USB cable in a free USB port and now let's start the application normally the app will automatically find the right COM port to connect the charger with the computer click on connect now you can select if you want to charge or discharge and enter the desired battery settings in case the application doesn't show the COM port at startup, you can click on the magnify glass to search for the right COM port. Another alternative way is via Windows, Device Manager, Ports. Let's start charging and check the behavior. Charger kicks in with 5 amps and voltage rises promptly and enters flat zone around 3.25 volts. The advertised capacity is around 25 amp hours. That means it takes about 5 hours to charge the battery from 0 to 100%. At the end of the charging cycle, the voltage climbs quickly. This is normal behavior for an LFP battery. It also shows that there is only a few percentages of capacity between 3.45 volts and 3.65 volts. To discharge, I used the similar settings. Discharge current 5 amps, cutoff voltage was set to 2.7 volts. As you can see, voltage drops fast first few seconds and then remains flat around 3.25 volts. At the end, when the voltage drops below 3 volts, it drops very fast till it reaches the cutoff voltage. To make things easy, ZKI e Tech developed a nice feature. You can create a scenario to automate the charge and discharge function and set a number of cycles. You just have to program the different steps and the application will go through every step. Here's where I found a little glitch in the firmware. Values were pre-populated with a dot as separator where I had to use a comma. Minor issue might be linked to the country settings. In this case, I set the app to charge the battery to 5 amp, when full, wait 10 minutes, and then start the discharge cycle. You can even save the scenarios for later use. Press start to run the first command, and then wait the full 10 hours to discharge and recharge the battery. This nice graph is the result. A little sidetrack, from the same company I found this little test rack. It's designed to test smaller batteries like this 18650. In the past I tested really thousands of these batteries. I'm going to compare this tester with the old tester, the ZB206, and see how the results uh, compare. Should be very accurate, like the LFP tester, it also has a 4 wire uh, test capability. It's well built, it's made for uh, AAA batteries till 21700, like the larger one compared to the 18650. So I'm very curious uh, how this rack will perform. Let's start charging a couple of batteries with my DIY 18650 charger board. Once fully loaded to 4.2 volts, I started discharging them with the trusty ZB206 board. After 2 hours I found the capacity of the two cells. Then I charged the 1890mAh cell again to full capacity to compare it with the ZKE battery rack. We first set the rack on 18650. 
there's a little marker here but it says 18650 then install the cell ground is at this side as you can see the cell is mounted on the rack we have four wires the two inner wires are for the sensing leads and the short wires are for the charge and discharge Now all cables are attached, we can start the application, we see immediately the voltage appearing on the screen, the voltage is also available here on the load tester, now I will share my screen. The fully loaded 18650 is installed in the ZKE test rack. We can see the parameter set for the test. Let's click start to run the test. Of course I'm not gonna bore you with the whole discharge test. So with some magic video editing, we fast forward to the end of the test. Once the cell reaches 3.2 volts, it drops very fast to the cutoff voltage of 3 volts. Once the discharge is finished, the voltage jumps back a few millivolts. The capacity found during the test was 1895 mAh, very close to the 1888 mAh measured by the ZB206 board. Of course the graph generated by the app is a nice bonus, but it confirms that the ZB206 is a very accurate too. Let's check the accuracy and noise of the battery tester. For one amp it's spot on and the fan noise is very acceptable. For 5 and 40 amp it's a few percentages off, but the noise level increased significantly. There was no difference in noise level between 5 amp and 40 amps. Before we jump to the conclusion of this hardware, you probably ask yourself why I didn't test it more 280 amp hour cells. Well there's a good reason for that, I already started mystery shopping. 280 amp power cells from uh, Chinese web shops, so I will test many more in the near future. A good reason to subscribe to this channel, so you have a good view on where and how to buy these cells yourself. About the hardware, I'm very positive, it's a great piece of Chinese engineering, it works flawlessly, it works very well, the graphs are a nice bonus. And it's really designed to uh, do acceptance tests of cells. So I really recommend this piece of hardware and if you have questions don't hesitate. The manual software and the scripts are available for us download under the video and if you have questions don't hesitate to contact me. This was Frankie for easypowerwall.com. See you on the next video.